G'day and welcome to 5 Minutes with Fitzy. Peter Fitzsimons is here. Hello, Peter. Good to see you. Big news this week. Kevin Roberts, CEO mm. of Cricket Australia. He is gone after less than two years in the role. And that makes not one, not two, but three chief executives of major sports in Australia yep. to fall on their sword during the pandemic. And before we go on, here's a question for you. Okay, so you're Mr. Rugby League, blah, blah, blah. But you're also Sports Sunday. You follow sports. So here's an honest question for you. Before this week, and I, if I'd said to you, who is the CEO of Cricket Australia, would you have immediately had that answer? Would you have known his name? Well, yes, only because we talk about him a fair bit on the show. Yeah, okay. Well, I would. But I don't think Johnny come. You know, I don't think Johnny in the street would know no. who. who nor, would, nor, nor, even Gen, nor even Jenny in the street. No, no. no. okay. So, but, but what, what are you trying to my say? Point is, saying, my do, point is, I work. No, no. I work in the realm of sports journalism, so you know I've got to I've got to be across it. And with the greatest respect to Kevin Roberts, who I don't know, mm. but that is the point. I certainly knew who James Sutherland was. I certainly knew who Todd Greenberg was. Yeah. Raylene Castle is the current guy, Rob Clark, and I, so I don't know what job he has or hasn't done. I'm not qualified, but I can say this: net impact on the world of. Yep. I mean, I think part of that role, if you were going to be the CEO of a sport, of a major sport. People need to know your name. You need to be doing enough announcements or cut through or whatever. The people go, oh, hang on, Kevin, just a sec, Kevin Robertson, what, yeah, what? And so if I were to mark him down on the one thing I'm qualified to mark him down on was total lack of penetration in the field that he's in. Against that, I would say this, that if you were every CEO of every sport, just about, or just about, just about every CEO of every business, mm -hmm. when COVID came along, just about nobody saw it coming. Mm. It's a tough gig. So, so, so Raylene Castle survived about two months. To, you know, yeah, in, Tom in Greenberg probably less than probably that. less than but, that. But the thing about I think that it, what's baffled everyone with the cricket world mm. is the amount of damage COVID has seem, seems to have done to it. When yes. we're in the off season, like there's, they've barely yeah. been touched in terms of their fixtures. Mm. There was a couple of matches against New Zealand that were thrown in anyway, just yeah. to make a bit of cash. They still went to air; they just didn't have fans mm. there, or at least one did. I think the other two may may have been cancelled altogether. But we're, we're, we're talking winter sports. We can understand the rugby league, the AFL, the mm. union, the A League, all getting postponed, all being financially affected. But to come out and have these dire Dire cuts made, yeah. made to the sport. There was an interesting piece. Crash Craddock in the News Limited papers wrote, wrote an interesting piece this morning saying for, that for all the sins, rugby league actually did come together. You yep. know, so behind, well, in fact, they got rid, they got rid of Todd Greenberg, for, which is a bit tough, but they actually did climb on board the, mm. in fact, it was the Volandis train, yep. and everybody came together and was unified, whereas cricket seemed to sort of implode mm. and, and turn on each other. I'll tell, really? tell you who I would get to run cricket. I, I'd get Mark Taylor. I mean, he know Mark Taylor. I know he's busy. I know the Channel Nine wouldn't let wouldn't let him go, but Taylor would be good because yeah. immediately that Mark Taylor speaks on matters of cricket, you lean forward because yep. he understands the figures. He's been out there, so he certainly understands it from the point of view of a mm. of the of the at board level and at the cricket level. I mean, he's done it. Give Mark Taylor a gig. Tell you, should we text him and see if he wants it? We could. Uh, the, the look on his face, though, through, yeah. like when he when he actually it was almost relief though when he got off the board during that after the whole sandpaper um, mm. saga as well. I mean, it took it it takes its toll being in that role and going through those years as well. So whether or not he'd want to jump back in, I'd love to see that too. I think he'd be fantastic. What about he's a cricket man? Mm. He's a businessman. How long has he been the face of Fujitsu mm. for? A couple that, of decades. That could be it. Or the other one they could give a go to would be my old mate Ian Chappell. Oh, Incoming! <laughs> and it rattled a few cages uh, along the way too. Um, so where does cricket go from here? Obviously, they've got the, the the man that's at the helm of the T20 World Cup has come in as the interim. Yeah, um, a man and, with an English accent. And we, yeah. Anyway, that and what a good thing. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and we don't we, we don't even know if there's going to be a T20 World Cup. We've got no confirmation yet. We've got no, fixtures set in stone for uh, the Indians. That was series. the other thing that Craddock said was talked about lack of confidence in cricket. You know that there seems to be a general pessimism abroad. And yep. again, for all the rugby league sins, they did put out optimism. You know, we're we're forging forward in difficult times. I tell you what, I've had an interesting couple couple of conversations with some serious power brokers in rugby union in the last right. two or three days. To my surprise. 
There's a bit of optimism there too. Right. I can't see what it's based on, but there's a bit of, you know, well, stuff they've got happening. Well, they a TV deal sorted for this year at least. Yes, and we'll see. But I'll tell you what, I reckon they do have options down the track as well. So we'll see. A bit of a relief for them, I, I would imagine, seeing the crowds in New Zealand, seeing full houses for a couple of games over the weekend and thinking, yep. well, you know, there's, a, there's and yet, definitely a... I know New Zealand's a different market to Australia. Yes. But there's a desire to have sport back. And I think rugby fans, maybe in this absence, have realised... They might realise they, they want their sport. Back. There's a lot of discussion in rugby at the moment about the changing the rules because rugby league with the whole six again thing, which yeah, you yeah. explained to me, but I forget again. But all I yeah. see is every now and then, every, when it's about to stop, the referee says, oh, oh, six again, and it seems to keep moving, which yeah. is good. And rugby union... Well, that's what rugby use, union used to be known for. That's the right. The flow. The flow. And, that, and we need to learn from that. Carry on, we'll as you were. Cricket to footy. Do you reckon that's five minutes? I don't know <laughs> <what> it is. Thank <laughs> you, Peter, as always. Bye-bye. That's five minutes with Fitzy.